Good morning. Welcome to Church Online. Happy Mother's Day to all those wonderful mothers out there. And dads, I hope you're going to spoil them today. Would you like to join with me and let's worship our King and have some fun? If you have your Holy Communion emblems with you, grab them so you're ready. Come on, join with me. Okay, let's go. I'm pastor of New Life Christian Centre here at Christie's Beach in South Australia. Welcome to Home Church Online. We're going to have a great time today as we worship the Lord. And it's a special day because it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And we're really believing that God is going to bless your heart as we celebrate today. Just want to mention a couple of things to you. Firstly, our Zoom Connect group on Thursday night is going extremely well. If you want to connect with us, just let me know. In regard to World Missions, uh, we're at the end of the month, we're going to have a, a special offering uh, to receive um, an offering for the cyclone relief work in Vanuatu, but also for the Rice family who have been cooped up for about seven weeks with their little boys in the Middle East there, and we just want to do something to really bless that family. So at the end of the month, we'll be receiving an offering. If you want to give online, then just go to our website and you'll see our giving page there. And just make sure, please, that you mark your offering very clearly, whether it's Vanuatu, Cyclone Relief, or the Rice family, or your general uh, giving today. So uh, that's what's happening in the area of world missions. Uh, if you want to help people locally, then uh, the Salvation Army is a wonderful organization, as we know. And here in Nolunga, the Nolunga chapter is doing a lot of work to reach people locally with care packages and other services. So if you'd like to give towards the Salvation Army to help local people, uh, just go to their website and uh, you can find out information about that there. Each week I'll be sending out a text uh, to everybody, as I have been doing and keeping you updated, but hopefully it won't be too long and we'll be back together again so we can pray for that uh, today in our service. We'd like to give you an opportunity to worship God with your tithes and free will offerings. And if you're watching for the first time or you're not used to church life, uh, don't be pressured at all. This is something we do 
uh, as an act of worship to our God. I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1 to 4. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. The Macedonian churches were really suffering. They were experiencing persecution. Uh, they were in a place of poverty and hardship. He goes on to say, out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. I, I, I'm inspired by that. Uh, how do you give when you're in a place of poverty? Well, these people knew the Lord. They knew that God was their provider and God had called them to use whatever they had to be a blessing to others. It says, entirely on their own, they, urged, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. Here they were in a place of hardship, pleading with the, for the opportunity to give to help other Christian people that were also in need. It just inspires me. You know, um, I know that some of you are going through real difficulty at the moment, and we don't want to see any pressure on people to give. But, you know, it's as we see what we have and use what we have uh, and give out of that then God will really pour blessings into our lives and help us through our difficult time. And we're going to be praying for people who have lost jobs and, and people who are going through hardship um, at this time a little later in the service. But let's, um, let's commit our offering to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the example of the Macedonian churches who out of their difficulty and hardship, they still had a heart to give. And Father, we want to be like that. We want to express the, the heart attitude of Christ who gave his all for us. And Father, I thank you for your blessing upon the giver. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, being Mother's Day, we've got something special for you. So sit back and enjoy this. And then Annie and Rebecca are going to come and just share a little with us and bring our Children's and Youth Church talk today. God bless you. Good morning, I'm Rebecca and I'm Annie. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> so today I have a word of encouragement for all the mothers out there. Proverbs 31 verse 25 to 26. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Remember this word if you feel you are lacking in parts pray about it. On behalf of all the children, I'd like to say thank you for putting up with us. We may not always be the easiest to deal with, but your guidance is what helps us grow. Children aren't meant to grow by themselves, so thank you for all the wisdom and love you have given to us. Keep up the good work. I just also want to say for all the people out there who don't have mums with them, that in Isaiah 66 verse 13, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. God is like a father and a mother. He cares for you and protects you. So I'd like to encourage you to turn God, turn to God like he was your mum. And now I would just like to share two Bible verses. The first one is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. You should be known for the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is so precious to God. And the second one is from 1 Corinthians chapter 31, verses 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Now I would like to share a poem that I think would be really special for Mother's Day. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion 
and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish, and enduring come that way. For nothing can destroy it or take that love away. And it never fails or falters. When others are forsaking, it is patient and forgiving. Even though the heart is broken, it believes beyond believing, when the world around condemns. And it glows with all the beauty of the rarest and brightest gems. It is far beyond defying, but it defies all explanations. And it still remains a secret, like the mysteries of creation. A many splendid miracle man cannot understand, and another wondrous evidence of God's tender guiding hand. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for all the mothers out there. Thank you for their love, their kindness, and the strength they show to all their children. We pray that you give them the strength to go out through each day and keep teaching us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Annie and Rebecca. Fantastic. We're going to take a moment now to pray uh, for families, for people in need, and for our nation. So let's bow our heads in prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for the fact that you hear our prayers. And God, we pray for our nation at this time. Lord, that you would provide a vaccine, not only for our nation, but for the whole world, that a vaccine would come quickly now so that steps can be taken to bring life back. To, uh, to normal again. Father, we pray you'd bless families that are watching this if they're in need, provide their financial needs. If they need a job, we pray that you'd provide them with a job in Jesus' name. God, get them through this time and bring them through into a larger place, a place that is even more blessed than what they ex have experienced before. Father, we thank you for healing for those that need healing today. If you need healing in your body, just reach out to the Lord now and just thank him for touching your physical body right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for uh, mothers today, particularly those that, for them, it's a difficult day for various reasons. And God, we just pray you'd comfort them and strengthen them and protect them in Jesus' name. Father, for families, we just thank you for helping them through everything they're going through. And Lord, you're a God who provides. You're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And God, we're just believing you for your grace to abound in our lives over these coming days. And Father, that also we would not be just focused on ourselves, but you'd help us to continue to reach out to others and be a blessing to them. Father, we thank you for the opportunities that exist today uh, to be a blessing to others. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite Gail now to come and lead us around the table of communion. So if you have your communion gear ready, your bread and cup, then uh, Gail's going to come and lead us now. God bless you. Good morning and welcome around the communion table this morning. I'd like to share with you this morning a wonderful scripture, Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7. We read, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful promise that is to us. You know, as we think the words through a little bit, what Jesus has done on the cross for us is so powerful that he can say to us, I know you're going to be anxious and worried about all sorts of things. And when you think about it, it's true, isn't it? Every day brings new opportunities to be anxious or to be worried about certain circumstances or things that um, you just don't want to have to deal with. But he's saying there, um, bring it all to him. Don't be anxious, just bring it all to him. And what's so fabulous is he continually invites us to pray and talk to him and bring those issues to him. And that's what he wants us to do. Isn't that fantastic that we can talk to a living God because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us and we can have a confidence that he wants to hear what we have to say. You know, he also says, don't just say, don't just pray at once. Continue, continue to bring those prayers and let's not forget the thanksgiving. You know, when we have a think about the things that we're worried about, we flip that over. There's so many things that we have an opportunity to be thankful for. And we can also be thankful for what Jesus has done on the cross for us. What is so wonderful there 
he talks about this transfer that takes place. So where we were being anxious and worried, now that we're bringing it to him constantly and talking to him about it, he now says the peace of God. It's the peace of God that will surpass all understanding that will come and guard our hearts. When I think about guarding something, I think about a soldier. And I think it's a fabulous way to think about the Lord's peace in us, that he can stand guard like a soldier over our hearts with his peace so that we can really rest in him. Wonderful, wonderful promises that the Lord Jesus has given us here. If you're at home now and you have your bread and your cup, let's just hold them in our hands for a minute because I want to say whatever your problem is, and even if your problem is that you don't know Jesus yet, I want to read you Acts 4.12. There is no one else who has the power to save us. For there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which we must experience our salvation. And that is the name of Jesus. So let's celebrate Jesus today and what he has done on the cross for us. If you've got your bread, let's take that and eat. And your cup, which represents the blood covenant. Let's drink that. And let's just pray for a moment. Lord, we just thank you that your desire is to help us to have the most wonderful relationship with you and the Father that is possible. And we just thank you for all of that. There's so much to be thankful for when we think about the beautiful work you've done on the cross. Bless us today, I pray, because we really do need you. And I just thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Have a beautiful day. Thanks, Gail. We're going to gather around the, the, the word of God now. I love the Bible. You know, it just, um, every day that I, when I read it, it just nourishes my soul, uh, builds my spirit, and really charges my faith and you know, it helps me to understand God in my life more and more. So we're going to gather around the, the Word of God today on this Mother's Day. You know, I'm so thankful for my own mother and all that she did for me as a boy and, of course, my brother also. Uh, she was a great mum and still is, and I'm so thankful for her. Um, today I want to have a look at what we can learn from mothers, that if we apply it to our lives, we'll actually improve our relationships and we'll actually improve our, our effectiveness in service to Christ also because there's so much about motherhood uh, that reflects the very ministry of Christ. I want to read a, an interesting passage from uh, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6 to 9. 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 6 to 9. Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica. He's speaking about his ministry and the ministry of the other apostles and he likens their ministry to the ministration of motherhood. He says, as apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brethren, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You know, he talks about caring. He talks about comforting, loving, sharing their lives. He talks about toil and hardship. He talks about working 24-7 for the cause. He talks about teaching and training and a full investment of their lives into the ones who had become so dear to them. Sounds like motherhood to me. And it's just fascinating that this great man, the Apostle Paul, uh, saw so much in motherhood that was so much like the very ministry of Christ. Today, let's look at what we can learn from this and what we can actually apply to our lives. And I really believe, as I said earlier, this will vastly improve our relationships and our effectiveness in life. Firstly, a mother has a willingness to endure discomfort and pain for the sake of the child. And all the mothers said, Amen. 
Um, it's not that mothers go looking for pain and discomfort, but it's just part and parcel of what it means uh, to be a mother. Paul talks about toil and hardship. Toil and hardship, working night and day. Sleepless nights, fatigue, being emotionally and drained, uh, hard work. You know, I think of my own mum and I remember growing up, she would often take extra jobs just to bring a bit more money into the house. And of course, as a child, you don't really um, understand how that is impacting your mum. But I know that it, it, there were sleepless nights as she worked outside the home and she worked inside the home. Isn't it true that being a mother is a full-time job in itself and more so as they have so many different hats uh, to wear. I remember my mum enduring tough times and, uh, you know, really often sacrificing herself and, and the things that she wanted for the sake of us, my brother and I. And I remember too the, the, the treatment that my brother and I dished out to my mum at times and I'm quite ashamed of it now. Not that we were really bad boys, but, uh, you know, I just remember some of the things we put mum through. I, d I remember one occasion where uh, we were just behaving really badly in the home and mum had just had enough and she started chasing us through the house and we screamed out the back door and at the back door was a concrete paved area with a clothesline and I remember as I was running away laughing I turned around to see my brother my mother come crashing down on this concrete path and of course it really I just turned around and I, I was just so shocked and of course so upset that I'd caused such pain for my mother and mum. I don't think I've ever apologised. Um, my brother has, I know, but I'm really sorry for, the, for that pain that I caused you then. But isn't it true that mothers just go through so much that their children just aren't aware of? By the way, I was much better than my brother, I'm sure. Uh, after I left home at age 16, he would do things like try and blow up the backyard with dynamite. Um, I mean, who would do that? But uh, uh, Colin did, and he probably didn't think that that would affect mum or my dad in any way, shape or form, but uh, that was true. That's a true story. And of course, it only came out years afterwards when Colin could admit to such things. But uh, what we put our parents through, you know, if you're a young person watch this, watching this today, go the extra mile to bless your mum and to help her out today because she sacrifices so much. You know, it's the self-denial and sacrifice of our mothers that act as a springboard for a child's success in life. You don't, you don't see that until years on, but it really is all of that hard work, and of course dads as well, but we're talking about mums today. It's the self-denial and sacrifices that mothers go through and, and make that act as a springboard for the success of their children. So thanks mums today for all the sacrifice and selfless giving you have expressed and continue to express for the sake of your kids. So they're willing to endure discomfort and pain for the sake of their child. The second thing is that they have an uncompromising will to care for and protect their children, to protect their children. You know, Paul talks about caring for those Christians in, Thessalon, uh, in, in, um, in Thessalonica. And, uh, you know, I just see, see this apostle's heart to want to protect them and to care for them. And, and, you know, as he looked to a mother, he saw those qualities there, protecting and preserving the lives of those entrusted to them. You know, there's one thing that I know about, and that is that you don't lay a hand on the bear cubs. You don't come anywhere near uh, harming the bear cubs. Mothers are ferocious protectors of their children, and we know that too well and you know what you don't mess with an angry mother bear it will not go well with you and I remember over the years there's only been oh, a couple of times where people have represented any kind of threat to our kids and I just watched my own wife and beautiful lady turning into this bear that would just take you out if you dare touch the bear cubs and isn't it true that mothers have this instinct to obviously protect their children and I, I really th I'm thankful for my mother and the way she protected me and my brother through our growing years. And just a word to kids today, if you're watching this, that don't despise your mum for the boundaries and even the restrictions that she places upon your life because she's doing it because she has this passion, this will to care for and protect you, to preserve your life. So maybe it'd be good to thank her for that heart attitude and uh, we can certainly be grateful to all mums for the, um, the way in which they protect us uh, in our growing uh, years. How wonderful. The third thing is that a mother has a heart which is fully invested 
into her child's well-being, growth and development. You know, mothers are fully invested. You know, that's just the only way to describe it. There's just no holding back. They are fully invested in that. You know, Paul talks about how he was delighted to share with the, the, um, the Thessalonians not only the gospel of God, but their lives as well. You know, Paul was fully invested into the care of those early Christians, and just as a mother is uh, towards her own children. And of course, Paul had a purpose for his ministry, that the lost might be saved, that they might come to know Christ, that they might continue to walk in him. There was so much threatening that, but Paul was invested fully in ensuring that these Christians had a good grounding and that they could uh, continue on in their faith journey. So to that end, he shared not only teaching, but he shared his life as well. He shared his life, and of course, mothers fully invest themselves in sharing everything that they are, everything that they've known to help their children grow and develop. And so I love that. Their example, their teaching, and their very selves is fully invested into us. And I want to thank mothers today for all that they've invested into their children. Friends, this is the language of love, isn't it? And I think that's why Paul was so, uh, so happy with identifying a mother's love to the love of Christ and the love of Christians who would seek to nurture others. God, who is love, is like that towards us through Christ. He says in uh, Isaiah 66, As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. There's this heart of God to comfort. It brings no pleasure to God at all to see people suffering, to see people um, perish, to see the kinds of difficulties and challenges that people go through in their lives. His heart is to comfort, to restore, to protect, to deliver. And we see that in his attitude towards his people. I love um, Jesus' words. And he's talking about his heart for, or, and God's heart for his people. How often I have longed to gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. And often we see that in the Old Testament, that God longed for, God, for his people to be um, in his care, and, and just like a, uh, a hen gathers her chicks under her, her wings, he longed to have that relationship with his people, but people, his people wouldn't do it. They often went astray and sought you know, their, their comfort and their ease and their life in other things. Uh, but that's God's heart. His desire is to comfort and care for his people. And you know what? If we too choose the way of love, then we will treat others in like manner. We'll have a willingness to endure discomfort and pain for the one that we love. Isn't that true? And we need to think about the example of Jesus who went through so much that we might have life, that we might be freed from sin and death and enter into that wonderful relationship that God longs for each one of us to have. And as a Christian pastor, and this is a real word for elders and for uh, deacons and for people who seek to serve others, that we need to emulate Christ, who is willing to go through stuff for the sake of the one loved. So a willingness to endure com discomfort and pain for the one loved. Secondly, an uncompromising will to care for and protect the one loved. That's caring and preserving and protecting people. And a heart to fully invested into the well-being, growth and development of the one loved. And Paul loved those people, just as a mother loved, loves uh, their children. And, you know, we too, as we look at our relationships, are we fully invested in their well-being? Are we willing to make sacrifices for them and endure whatever it might take to bring blessing into their lives? Do we have a, an uncompromising will to protect and preserve relationships that we have? You know, I, I think as we put these things into practice, the quality of our relationships escalates, it goes up, and the quality of our own lives also improves vastly. Who do you love? To whom have you committed your life to love? Spouse, children, family, friends, church, others? You know, I think we need to have that kind of attitude when we approach all of our relationships and really believe that God is going to bless people through us you know, I think we live in a world that's increasingly more about me when Jesus comes and says, give your life away. Make the sacrifice necessary to love those that you've committed your life to and invest into them for their well-being. It's a model for Christian ministry and leadership. 
And as I said earlier, it's a great word for elders, for deacons, for all those who seek to serve Christ and people in this world. The question is, what can I do today and over coming days to love people in that way? What sacrifices can I make for my wife, for my children, for my parents, for our mothers? What sacrifice can I make for the church? I'm not talking about an institution. I'm talking about the very people of God, the family of God. What sacrifice could I make for lost people who don't know Jesus yet? I think these things, these questions are really important for each one of us. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your love for us. We thank you, Lord God, that Jesus gave his life. He came and he was willing to go through discomfort and pain for our sake. That's the language of love of self-sacrificing, selfless love. And God, I just pray you'd help us to, to seek to, do, to, to live like that for the sake of others. Help us to have always in our hearts the best interest of others, the highest interest of others, and to do whatever it takes to help them to live a life that is blessed. Lord, we just thank you for, again, for mothers today. Lord, encourage them and bless them and help them to, uh, to find fulfillment in whatever they're putting their hand to. If they're tired and bedraggled and, and just worn out, to refresh them today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to do that today. And I'm going to pray a prayer now. And you can uh, join in and pray this prayer. And it's a wonderful prayer that simply gives your heart to Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and taking my sin and punishment upon yourself. I turn from my sin to you. I receive your forgiveness. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for conquering death for me and for your resurrection, through which I too can rise to eternal life. I receive you, Jesus, by faith. And I thank you now for the new life, eternal life, I have in you. Amen. You know, the Bible says if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, you've become a born-again person. You were born physically, but you're born again spiritually. You're a new person in Christ. And, you know, I just encourage you today to do whatever you can to follow Jesus. And I would love to know if you prayed that prayer today. So please connect with us through our webpage, uh, info at newlifeonline.org.au. You'll see the contact information there. I'd love to contact you and just encourage you in your faith. Uh, no expectations. No, don't demand anything from you. We just want to be able to give to you. So I, I hope that if you're watching this and you hadn't given your life to Jesus, that now you have. If you've been away from the Lord and you know you have, today's a day to return to him because he gave his all, just as a mother gives her all to her children. So Jesus gave his all for us and he loves you immensely. Amen. Well, I pray that God will bless you over the course of this week and have a great day. And we look forward to seeing you again at Home Church Online here at New Life Christian Centre. And I just trust that you're going to have a fantastic week. We're praying for you. And we're going to invite our team back now to lead us in one closing song. God bless you. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your unliving hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place Fear your glory, God.
of your goodness. 